One of the big headline features of Logic Pro for iPad is the ability to take a project started in Logic Pro for Mac over to Logic Pro for iPad and pick up exactly where you left off. Apple calls this round trip compatibility and on paper it sounds really useful and straightforward to pull off. In practice, it's a wee bit more complicated. In this video, I'll show you a few ways that you can move a Logic Pro for Mac project over to Logic Pro for iPad and back again. Plus, we'll see exactly what happens when you try to open a project that contains desktop-only plugins that aren't compatible with the iPad platform. All right, I'm gonna share the Lil Nas X demo project found in Logic Pro for Mac in this video. It uses all stock Logic plugins and sounds so there isn't any compatibility issues. Plus, it's a big old meaty multi-track project, so it'll be really interesting to see how the iPad handles it. I've renamed and saved the project file to my Logic folder on my Mac. Now, by far the easiest way to share a project file from Mac to iPad, assuming they're in close proximity to each other, is AirDrop. Right-click on the project file, click on Share, and then select AirDrop. Make sure that the iPad you want to send to is unlocked. Click on it to select it, and you're off to the races. If your iPad isn't close enough to your Mac to be able to use AirDrop, you can drop the file into your iCloud Drive folder in the Finder, and once it uploads, you'll be able to access it from the iCloud Drive location from within the Files app on your iPad. I've duplicated the file inside my Logic folder on Mac, then dragged that duplicated file into the iCloud Drive tab inside the Finder window. We should see both versions of this file when I jump across to the iPad. You can also upload the Logic project file to Google Drive, Dropbox, other cloud-based services like that. Though I would recommend compressing the file before doing this as it does drastically reduce the size of the file. Jumping over to iPad then, if I open the Files app and tap on the iCloud Drive location, I can scroll down and find both the version of the project file that I airdropped across to the iPad and the copy that I added to my iCloud Drive in the Finder on Mac. Opening a Logic Pro for Mac file on iPad is as easy as just tapping on it. Despite being a rather large project, there's over 130 tracks here, Montero opens without a hitch and plays back completely smoothly. Can he play too much of that here though for fear of some kind of mad copyright shenanigans, but you get the idea. Some of these tracks, especially the vocals, have loads of plugins loaded up, and if you're looking for tips on how to create your own chart-topping banger in Logic Pro for iPad, the secret sauce seems to be adding pitch correction to your banjos. Who knew? Sending files from iPad to Mac works the same way. I tested this by sending Logic Pro for iPad's demo project, Manzana, over to my Mac via AirDrop. Except one of the sounds used in the project wasn't present on my Mac. I was given the choice to manually search for it or to ignore it and open the track without it. Upon opening the track, everything played back fine, bar that missing instrument. We got a little taster of how Logic Pro handles missing sounds and plugins on the Mac side there, but what happens if you try to open a Logic Pro for Mac project file in Logic Pro for iPad that contains third-party desktop-only instruments and effects? In this Logic project on Mac, I have a guitar track that contains an instance of Positive Grids, Bias FX, a vocal track that has an instance of Isotope's Nectar 3 on it, and I've added a Spitfire BBC Orchestra instrument plugin into the mix just for fun. 
To keep things simple, I've shared the project to my iPad using AirDrop again. Over on the iPad, I can see the project file here in my Recents folder. This time when I tap to open it, the project does open, but a missing audio files message pops up. Clicking OK here takes me to this Errors Found pop-up, which lists all of the AU plugins that are present in the Logic Pro for Mac project that aren't available on the iPad. When you click through these errors, it reads, install this missing audio unit extension to continue using it in your song. Hitting continue loads the project up fine though, any tracks that have desktop effects plugins will play back without them. And any instrument plugins won't play back at all, though the MIDI data is imported, so you can just assign a different MIDI instrument and have the track play back that way. Yes, you can bounce tracks in place in Logic on your Mac before sending the project across to iPad and kind of work around things that way, but you would lose all ability to tweak and adjust them doing that. It's not really ideal. You would assume that if users can send a 130 plus track from Logic Pro for Mac across to Logic Pro for iPad and have it run perfectly with not really any issues, it will definitely be able to handle a garage band for Mac project. Right? 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 Following the same process again, airdropping across a garage band for Mac project file and then attempting to open it in Logic Pro for iPads mm, doesn't work. It just doesn't. Tapping Learn More here takes you to this support page, where Apple's advice is to first turn your GarageBand for Mac project into a Logic Pro project by buying Logic Pro. Wow. You could just use the free trial for Logic Pro on Mac, but that's a lot of hoops to jump through for something that should probably just work. Right, that's how to share your Logic Pro for Mac project to Logic Pro for iPad and back again, and what to do if things go a wee bit wrong. Let me know your, I'm sure, perfectly reasonable and well thought out arguments about plugin compatibility in Logic Pro for iPad down in the comments. And if you could give that like button a strong but tender shoulder rub on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. Want to learn more about how to use third-party instruments in Logic Pro for iPad? Watch this next.